Okay, folks, can we, uh, can we make a start, please? Can I welcome everybody to the uh, special meeting of the cabinet? Um, obviously, the, the main item is the combined authority, but we'll just do the preliminaries first of all. Um, item one, there goes the chief executive name plate. <laughs> item one, members, members code of conduct. Members code of conduct. Uh, declarations of interest. Do any cabinet members wish to declare any interest in the business on this meeting? Please say now. No? Okay. So no, um, no items of uh, declarations of interest. Uh, so let's move on then to the, the main item, which is item two, um, combined authority. I'm just going to ask the chief executive to say a few words by way of kind of introduction and um, uh, a little bit about where we're up to with the combined authority, and then uh, we'll open up to questions and comments, etc. So, Graham, can I hand over to you? Yes, sir, thank you, Dr. Um The census report uh, is uh, identical to reports that are going to the other five authorities in the proposed Liverpool City Region combined authority. And all the uh, authorities are taking it to the council for full endorsement. Until four of the other authorities have confirmed their support, and uh, we expect the other two authorities to confirm their support in the next day or so. And this report um, confirms the decision we made in September, where you asked us to begin consultations in relation to establishment of our combined authority, along the lines that existed in Manchester for a number of years. We're not the only area in the country that's pursuing this path. There's combined authority uh, for uh, the Sheffield City region, uh, one for the Leeds City region, and one for uh, the Newcastle Sunderland region. The reason why each of those authorities are going down the same path as uh, Liverpool City region is the government have made it very clear that the uh, way to gain access to significant generation funding going forward is to adopt this method of the governments or the alternative was the city region there to, to, to adopt that proposal. You can see uh, the, um, the, the adoption of this uh, combined authority is very high level strategic authority. The, the statutory function relates to technology development, generation and transport and these are the conditions of the area. It is envisaged that there will be no staff, <coughs> no staff employed by this combined authority and no extra costs to the district councils of the combined authority being um, established. If there's any pieces of work to do, that will be done by uh, individuals and um, contemporaries comment or officers working together as, as virtual teams to carry out the functions of the combined um, authority. It's an expected suite of parliamentary approval, and parliamentary approval is expected recommencing the uh, 14th of March, and we have very strong indication from both the DCLG and from the Merced MPs that this movement will be supported, that this combined authority will come into existence on the 1st of April. The reason why the 1st of April is important is clearly one of the major components of the combined authority is the uh, Major travel and major travel being statutory body need to start its accounts from the first of the year to have the power to spend money, which is the only major spending function of, of the combined authority, and that will need to have those powers from the first of April, hence the need to start. Yeah. There will be an AGM in uh, June, which, which will set the dates for the next um, round of meetings. Meetings will be held in public and the normal notification for the meetings will be given seven days notice and told will be a notice published by both Nosley and uh, displayed on their website and our websites which will give the full seven day notice and all the papers for the meeting on the first of April. I think Chair that's all I'd like to say. We'll have to ask any questions. I think members are very familiar with this issue because we've faced this several times over the past months. Okay, thanks, uh, Graham. Any, I'll, I'm going to say a few words, but any other cabinet member want to, uh, to make any other contributions? Can, can I just say, um, uh, 
uh, just to, to add to uh, Graham's introduction, um, <clears throat> I went to, uh, I attended on behalf of the uh, City Region Local Enterprise Partnership a, uh, a meeting on a week before last with um, Greg Clark, who is the Financial Secretary to the Treasury and Minister with responsibility for cities, and Lord, Lord Hesseltine uh, about the um, the Liverpool City Region's growth plan. Remember that, that uh, we are bidding for a um, pot of two billion nationally for the Liverpool City Region for regeneration um, over the next um, couple of years. And Greg Clark must have mentioned it <laughs> five or six times that if you, if, you sit, if the City Region doesn't have a combined authority, you you are at a disadvantage in terms of uh, accessing this growth funding money um, compared to other city regions. So the government are clearly laying, um, you know, a lot of uh, importance on the uh, the need to be uh, either a combined authority or the alternative model was the directly elected city region mayor. So uh, I think it would personally be folly for us to lose the opportunity of substantial amounts of. Um, additional funding for rural uh, by, by not going down the road the government have, have, have um, asked us to, to follow. Um, and certainly, you know, Greg, both Greg Clark and Lord Hesseltine will, will be on the, uh, the committee that makes decisions about where this growth funding, growth funding is, is, is invested. So um, I think there's an immediate uh, need really there and advantage for us to follow this path. I think you know just to the other point I, I just want to make to reiterate this is not a super council um, it's not going to lead to a new level of bureaucracy um, it, it is going to be cost neutral and I think it makes sense to um, streamline decision making around areas like economic development transport skills um, housing etc which which classically you know cut across local authority more boundaries just makes a lot of sense to me. Um, so I think for, for all of those reasons, um, we should agree the constitution that's before us um, this, this evening. And, and I think that um, um, hopefully if the order goes through Parliament um, uh, later this month, uh, we should be in a position where we can confirm the um, creation of a, a combined authority. Meetings will be in public. Um, Open to um, uh, there'll be a scrutiny committee as well to scrutinise the, uh, the decisions. I think it is a very transparent um, process, uh, and I think it, I think um, not to do this I think would be a backward step, frankly. So I'm happy to recommend cabinet that we agree these these recommendations. I think there's just one looking surgically. There's just one decision that we're being asked to make. And that's, if I can draw your attention to the recommendations cabinet in 14.1 um, item E, where we've been asked to make nominations um, to the combined authority as set out in um, section 5.1 um, of the report. Uh, so I think that's the, that's what, what the decision we need to make. In this right, I think George, you, you've got the first yeah. that I can do is to give me a budget to move as our nominations to the combined authority, uh, Councillor Phil Davis and Councillor Anne McCarthy. Okay, so so that would be myself as, as leader, leader and then Anne as the deputy leader. It would be all my alternative. Second. Is that second? Thanks, Sarah. Okay, so I think that's the only other that's the only other additional um, element of the recommendations. So if I if I move all of those recommendations in 14.1 on block, can I see all those in favour? Okay, that's unanimous, not against. Okay, so that's agreed. So that will go forward to council this evening. Okay, <laughs> thank you very much. So that then takes us to this one other item on the agenda we need to deal with, and that is item three, the pay policy statement for 2014-15. And, and Adrian, can I just ask you to talk to this, please? I was just saying, it's, uh, it's very straightforward, but I wouldn't draw attention to
is we um, will look at themselves as the relevant trade unions in the way. You will see on the pay structure that we've um, uh, we've been working to the national nationally negotiated uh, pay structure. <coughs> but the, 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 the effect of um, the uh, adoption of the um, Thanks, Adrian. So, recommendation um, in 51 that um, we agree the pay policy statement um, in line with the Section 38 of the Localism Act 2011. Um, can we agree that, Cabinet? Is that great? Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay, no, no other business that I've been informed of, so I'll close the meeting and thank you for your attendance. Thank you.